So as we are kicking things off, I want to welcome all of you to the 10th annual AZ Bio Trailblazer Awards and Legislative Event. Now, for those of you that are veterans of this event, normally we are at the Phoenix Country Club and you see their beautiful Christmas trees. This year, you're just going to have to make do with mine. <laughs> so um, I hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy at this very critical time. Um, I also want to recognize not just our honorees that are here with us today, but a number of members of the legislature and um, incoming members of the legislature who have also joined us. Um, we are thrilled to have you with us. And in the um, essence of time, I am not going to call out names, but if you look at the attendees, you'll be able to see who's there. Um, and with that, I am going to move forward. There's some things that we haven't been able to do um, as often as we do normally, um, but we always do the Pledge of Allegiance at Trailblazers. And so I would like you to keep your microphones on mute so it doesn't sound like a very strange chorus, but please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands. One nation, One nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. So it's not quite the same, but it's still important. So thank you very much. I'd also like to say thank you to our Trailblazers sponsors um, who helped us you know, throughout the year in putting this together. And our sponsors this year are NGEN, and the Biotechnology Innovation Organization. And on behalf of our sponsors, Keith Trailer, are you there? Yes, I am here. I am here. I just wanted to thank AZ Bio for their partnership. Amgen is absolutely honored to sponsor this event. And we really appreciate all the legislators who have been champions on our behalf. So congratulations and onward to the event. Terrific. Thank you so much, Kiki. And I want to thank all of our 2020 AZ Bio supporters. Um, there are too many of them to name. But the work that AZ Bio does in our community, from public health education to working with our entrepreneurs and innovators, working with our patient advocacy groups, and working with our legislative leaders, would not be possible without our AZ Bio supporters. So our AZ Bio members, our AZ Bio sponsors, our AZ Bio volunteers, thank you for making what we do possible. And of course, I want to thank um, my bosses. So the AZ Bio Board of Directors are with us again today. Um, and they are have all expressed how much they are unhappy about the fact that they can't be here with you in person this year. But um, we are planning for next year, and we've already got it on the books. So with that, let's move on. And I'd like to honor our first Trailblazers honoree. And I am going to go through and tell you a little bit about them. Um, and then um, you're going to be hearing from a number of them as we move forward into the panel discussion. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Since we're not standing in front of the Christmas tree passing out awards this year, Carly Daniels and the team from Dorm Policy Group will be getting with all of our honorees to schedule a time when it is safe and appropriate to present their awards to them in person. And then we'll be sharing those pictures on social media, so stay tuned. Um, Senator Sean Bowie. Senator Sean Bowie um, is an advocate for education. He has also been extremely involved in mental health and particularly in suicide prevention. Um, he is also the state senator representing AZ Bio's district and my home district. Thank you, Senator Bowie. Senator Kate Brophy McGee. Senator Kate Brophy McGee has been a longtime champion of the biosciences is a member of the Arizona Bioscience Roadmap Steering Committee and has been a absolute trailblazer on, in the fields of health and education during her time in office. We're going to really miss you, Kate, next year. Um, but 
we are already thinking about ways to put her to work. Thanks to Senator Brophy McGee and her work with Doug Coleman two years ago, um, Prop 301 was extended. The extension of Prop 301 became even more important as it would have started to run out in 2021. And um, while they could not have imagined that COVID would have hit in 2020, we will all be thankful to Senator Murphy McGee and Representative Coleman for um, the diving catch that has taken us um, and supported our educators through this very, very difficult time. Senator David Gowan. Senator Gowan has um, a long um, history both in the House and in the Senate and chairs the Appropriations Committee and will be chairing it again in 2021. Senator Gowan um, was our hero on a number of very important bills relative to research and development and how we would fund our hospitals through these very challenging times. Um, by bringing those bills forward and getting them passed and getting them signed before the legislature had to adjourn early for signing, um, signing die. So Senator Gowan, you are our hero in getting those things through and to the finish line just in the nick of time. Senator Tyler Pace was not able to be with us today. Um, Senator Pace co-chaired the Health and Senate Health and Human Services Committee and was also very active on the Finance Committee. Uh, thanks to Senator Pace, we've had some very important stakeholder meetings on key bills, and he will be working with then Senator and Health Chair Nancy Barto um, again in this upcoming session. And that brings us to Representative Nancy Barto, soon to be Senator Nancy Barto again. So um, Senator Barto and her leadership this past year on the Health and Human Services Committee in the House um, shepherded through a number of pieces of key legislation. She is known as an important patient advocate and is often very actively involved in working with the patients to make sure that they have what they need. Senator Barto, you might want to mute your mic. Representative Kelly Butler. Um, Representative Kelly Butler is a champion for maternal health and for at-risk patients. She is a very vocal and active member of the Health and Human Services Committee in the House of Representatives and has been um, very, very active in studying key issues that you're gonna hear about a little bit later in our panel. Oops. Representative Cobb, um, is was uh, the other half of the dynamic duo in the appropriation side of the legislature that got key bills through the legislature in the nick of time. Representative Cobb was not able to join us today, um, but we are deeply indebted to her and to the Appropriations Committee for getting key bills through so that as we had to deal with a very difficult year, the state was prepared. Representative Daniel Hernandez, Jr. Um, was co-founder of the Arizona Legislative Bioscience Caucus this year, along with uh, Representative Jay Lawrence. And um, Representative Hernandez um, will be joining us from Tucson on the panel. He is also a member of the um, Arizona's Bioscience Steering Committee and a key voice for populations um, that are at risk and for equity across the healthcare spectrum. Dr. Amish Shaw um, has a very important role, not just at the legislature, but in the emergency room. Um, as the um, sole physician on the Health um, and Human Services Committee in the legislature, or in the um, House of Representatives, this for Eric, sure please mute your, your mic. Um, so, uh, Representative Shaw um, has also been um, our eyes and ears inside the hospitals as we track what's happening during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, his articles that he allowed us to publish and share with the bioscience community have been essential to keeping everyone connected. 
Um, and of course, the work that he's doing to help patients is truly essential. Thank you, Representative Shaw. And uh, last but not least, Representative Michelle Udall, um, who again is not able to be with us today because she had a more important thing to do. She's teaching. Mm -hmm. Representative Utah is Udall is um, the chair of the Education Committee in the House of Representatives and has been a key leader not just on K through 12 classrooms, but also the very important work that's done um, relative to internships and work study programs so we can get those students ready for the real world when they graduate. Um, so Representative Udall, um, I hope that your classes are going very smoothly right now. And with that, I want to um, move on to a special award. And with the um, Champion Award, the Champion Award is not given out every year. Um, it is given to a member of the legislature who is not returning, who has a long history of being um, an honoree at Trailblazers. Um, and Senator Carter has um, won the Trailblazer Award every single year since it was offered uh, and that she was in the legislature. Um, thanks to Senator Carter, we have had um, significant advancements in um, funding for children's health care, in advocacy for patients, and working very studiously in the House of Representatives when she served as chair. Um, to make a number of advancements for the people in the state of Arizona. And she has now moved into um, a new role in the community, but Senator Carter, we extend our deepest appreciation for your many years of service at the Arizona House of Representatives and in the Arizona Senate. Um, Senator Carter, would you like to say a couple of words? Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here with you today. And obviously, um, this is a year like none other, given uh, the pandemic and being here with you in Zoom. And I really miss seeing everybody in person at our amazing lunch that we've had year after year after year. So I just want to thank everybody that I've worked with that's not only in attendance today, but maybe that couldn't make this event today as well. It really is a team effort. And I know that the uh, biosciences is in good hands because you have a number of trailblazers that will continue their work at the Capitol. And while I may not be serving in an elected position, I'll still be continuing my work with the Greater Phoenix leadership. And I know that they take a particular interest in the biosciences. So thank you once again for all that you've done, Joan, to really shepherd these ideas over the finish line. And it seems like every year there's something new and exciting that we need to be focused on. So I look forward to continuing to work with you and everybody else on the call. And I, I am humbled by this award and uh, appreciate uh, your support of my work over the last 10 years. Thank you, Senator Carter. Okay, so with that, I will um, stop sharing my screen and come back to all of you um, as we move into um, probably the most interesting part of this particular event, where you get to hear from our legislators as they give their inputs into what we see as we go forward. You've heard about what they've done. Now we get to talk a little bit about the opportunities that they may have to make an impact in the future. Um, just so you know, we will be um, with our legislators that are here in person, our honorees, we will be going in alphabetical order. So I am not playing favorites, even though the first stop is the senator from AZ Bios District. So um, with that, I would like to introduce you to Senator Sean Bowie. Um, senator Bowie, as a state senator, you have focused on ensuring that our educators have the resources they need to both teach and guide our students. You've also led on mental health challenges and suicide prevention. What do you see as opportunities for further advancements in 2021? Well, thank you, Joan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's an honor to receive this award again. This is my third year in a row receiving this AZ Bio Award, and it's also an honor to represent you, Joan, and AZ Bio uh, in District 18 at the legislature. 
Um, yeah, mental health is obviously a really critically important issue. It's something we've worked on as a legislature. It's, it's really been an issue that hasn't been partisan. It's really been a bipartisan effort to uh, get more help for our students, for our schools. Um, the governor's led on this issue as well. Um, so we're looking forward to continuing that in 2021. Um, one piece of good news is some legislation that we had previously passed is going into effect this fall. Uh, our 2019 bill on requiring training for suicide prevention in our schools went into effect this fall. So now that's, you know, thousands of teachers and support staff and educators are now receiving that training so they can better help and assist our young, young people when they need it, um, which is critically important, obviously, with the pandemic and with COVID, um, mental health support is, is more important than ever, um, particularly for our young people. Um, so it's something we're going to lead on in 2021. Uh, we've got a couple different pieces of legislation that we're working on. A uh, big one for me and a lot of my colleagues has been getting more counselors and social workers in our schools. Um, we started that in 2019 with a grant program to um, allow funding for schools to hire more counselors and social workers. My hope is we can add to that funding um, here in the 2021 legislative session. Um, we have the worst student to counsel ratio in the country here in Arizona, over 900 students for every counselor. So my hope is we can um, get some more counselors in our schools going forward. Um, we're also looking at uh, mental health curriculum and making that more of a priority in our schools as well. So it's something that's taught every day or every week uh, for our young people starting at an early age. So um, it's something I'm gonna be working on this next legislative session with a lot of my colleagues. It's obviously a critically important issue and I look forward to working with everybody in the 2021 session and going forward. So thank you, John. And thank you, Senator Bowie. And so moving on, Senator Brophy McGee, during your terms in both the House and the Senate, you have been a leading voice for patients and for education. Um, as I earlier stated, uh, you came to the rescue on Proposition 301 funding, including the essential TRIF funding that has been used during this pandemic to help us get through with the testing that was developed at both the Biodesign Institute and the University of Arizona, as well as the research that was is being done right now on this virus at NAU. Um, you're not gonna be returning in 2021. What are some of the words of wisdom that you have for your fellow legislators? Well, thank you, Joan, and the bioscience Folks, I so am so honored by this award, and I appreciate more than I can say being asked this question. Um, and I wanted to thank you as well for calling out my record of accomplishments in education and healthcare and access to quality healthcare options. And I am expecting and believing there are individuals in this room who have benefited. Uh, from the legislation I was I successfully sponsored. So thank you so much. I had a million things written down for advice to my fellow legislators going forward. Um, and to make them specific to Joan Kerber Walker, I don't know what happened. It just went off. Um, so at any rate, a couple of things I'd like to say is adopt a bioscience company. Call up Joan go to some of her meetings, meet her little uh, ducklings, meet her enormous big uh, bioscience companies and understand the important role they play in our Arizona economy and the things that we can do as legislators to advance the biosciences here in Arizona. And it will help your work as a legislator to understand the challenges these companies face from everything from access to capital uh, going forward. It's also important to realize what a wealth of knowledge uh, Joan Kerber Walker is on both the state and the federal front. And it's it's a wonderful, she is a wonderful resource to tap into. So I like to frame, I've been asked this question uh, several times uh, by my friends about uh, how would I talk to you all going forward? What should you do? And I like to present it in the form of challenges and opportunities, because in fact, your challenges are your opportunities if you choose to make them so. Starting with a solid foundation, which is to build relationships and build trust 
with those in your own caucus and those in the other on the other side of the aisle. And that is how I've been successful in passing so many key pieces of legislation that have advanced cause, causes, so many causes for Arizona uh, in education, healthcare, child welfare going forward. So really seek, especially with the new session, new legislators to build those relationships because they will stand you in good stead when you get down to the bottom line and you have to solve problems, you have to get things done for Arizona. I also want you to keep in mind, I've been there 10 years and over and over again this year being no different, I've seen tremendous loss of institutional knowledge and uh, that, that happens with every legislative cycle and turnover. And I'm just gonna call out Senator David Bradley uh, Senator Heather Carter and me as examples, you have lost decades of institutional knowledge, process knowledge, statutory knowledge in the many fields, including healthcare, child welfare. And it's a, that presents a real challenge. The opportunity is for each of you to step up, to find a place where you can become involved, where you can become part of the process, where you can become the go-to trusted expert, expert on issues of importance uh, to Arizona. Uh, the other thing I can say is uh, recognizing reality. We all, it's kind of, the legislature isn't that much different from kindergarten and we all respond to the pressures of that, of that just high pressure institution in different ways. But it's important that you stand up to bullies, whether they are bullies in your own caucus or bullies from the other side of the aisle, and that you focus on doing what's right. You were not elected by your party. You were not elected by your ideology. You were elected by your constituents to represent them. And it's important that you keep that in mind. It's much easier um, walking away from this to be able to look myself in the mirror as I have every single day and say, I did what was right, I got things done, and I made a difference. And it will, it will stand you in good stead. Um, the last thing that I would say, confronting many, many crises, none so unique as COVID. The Great Recession was terrible. The COVID crisis is, is terrible. And I hate to see so much of it being politicized and tearing caucuses apart and tearing us apart. Uh, so I think the first thing that you could do as leaders is to sit down and figure out a path forward um, around certain issues that are important. And keep in mind what I mean by leadership. Leadership does not mean gotcha games, does not mean criticizing people in your own or the other party. Leadership actually means sitting down, working together and solving problems. I have had the distinct pleasure and honor of doing so with so many of you on this panel, with you, Joan, with your board. It is, it is just, an, it has been an enormous honor and I thank you all so very much uh, for this award and uh, for what you do for our Arizona economy. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Senator. And again, on behalf of all of the school children that have funding right now, thanks to your work and all of the children that have, and families that have health care, thanks to your work. Um, thank you. That's a very lasting legacy. So thank you very much. So, Senator Gallant, you are no um, newbie by any chance, by any stretch of the imagination, and you know what it's like to have to lead a caucus. Um, and now going into a very challenging year, you're going to be dealing with how to, to appropriate the money too. Um, but thanks to your leadership in the Senate, okay, essential pieces of legislation were able to be passed and signed into law. Um, as you return as Appropriations Chair, what are some of the opportunities and challenges that you might expect and how might this impact key programs like the angel investor tax credit, which so many of our companies rely on? 
Well, I want to say thank you for uh, uh, inviting me and uh, presenting me this award. Um, you know, it's uh, it's always an honor to be recognized for certain things. But, you know, uh, as Kate was talking about earlier, we do this on behalf of our constituency in the state of Arizona. I know that's what we're all elected to do. And just want to say uh, uh, thanks for your service. And to Heather, thanks for your service. Uh, all all the things that have been we've been able to do um, certainly in these areas as well and uh, look forward to what's coming next and you know just to piggyback on a little bit of what uh, uh, Kate was talking about uh, um, you know institutional knowledge is huge but it's also as you look at the different uh, uh, legislators on this panel here we all have certain expertises in our uh, uh, backgrounds too that's what makes us a great community, I think, um, as we go forward. Certainly uh, having 90 legislators with 90 different backgrounds, uh, sometimes you can draw on other people's experiences to help you with what you need when you're looking to, to uh, try to fix things. So appreciate all that. Um, certainly uh, um, when we're talking about uh, um, What's coming up? What what has happened? I think the 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 key here is how our economy is doing, both in our country and of course the state. And uh, um, you know, we had a, a bit of a scare February March, right? Uh, we were looking at a, a two billion, excuse, excuse me, a billion dollar surplus. Two billion in the uh, is what we lost when the COVID hit. So when you look at those numbers, we went a billion dollar projected in into uh, uh, the hole, as you'd say, and that was your March preview. Uh, October kind of put us at a, a zero zero balance when you're looking at uh, both this year and next year. So what's happening is we're seeing is our economy um, is doing better here in our state, and and I actually believe our our legislature has done a, a very well. Um, to improve that, improve the economy with the the regulatory reforms, uh, tax restructures, as as you just spoke about when you talk about uh, key areas like our angel investment, business investment uh, uh, reforms here. So those things draw together and actually put forth. And I'll tell you what we've done. This we've become the third uh, strongest state and economic momentum and what that means is uh, um, we're employing more people faster than any other state uh, we're actually growing uh, personal income stronger than before and this is attracting and growing more businesses through these policies and reforms we just talked about through such as the the angel uh, uh, tax reform there so you look at that and then the biosciences as what we're here for I mean uh, you know, uh, Southern Arizona is, is slow to grow sometimes, and the biosciences have helped us tremendously, certainly in the Oro Valley region. Um, you know, when I was speaker, we were able to pass the uh, the veterinarian um, school for, for U of A, which also was in part uh, the growth of our bioscience field in that area for U of A, too. So there, there are a lot of things that are, are looking good for us in this state, and I think we are a bioscience hub, actually, uh, which is good, which is good for our, our state and the economy that we see. Um, I think we'll continue to work hard for to make sure we maintain the, the strength that we have. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing states in the in the nation right now, and. As such, I think it's because of our, our policies and the things we've been able to do to draw those people here because they want to start a business here. They want to start a new life here. And uh, with that, uh, look at this economy that's going. I, I can't believe we came out of uh, we were a billion surplus to a billion negative. Now we're at zero, zero. So who knows what's happening in the future here for this economy? All I see is some strength. And that's because of all the people we see here. I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a strong economy because our people go to work and put forth the effort to make sure that their families are taken care of. And hopefully we can continue to draw more uh, uh, businesses from other states that's certainly in the bioscience field. And since we're starting to become experts across uh, three universities, actually, right? So 
this is a it's a great exciting time i think we're going to see more uh thank you senator gallon and um to build on what you opened the door to some of the things that i love to brag about um, and when we look at our companies um arizona was ranked nationally as number five as the you know emerging bioscience sectors so those growing sectors it was the first time we we made the list and we debuted at number five That's so to do it. that is that is coming up um but equally important you know i i know and i see a number of our um, angel investors on the call um the angel investor tax credit is a way to incentivize those investors to put their money into Arizona companies as opposed to someplace else. And um, what we're seeing now is that the spin outs coming out of our universities, the entrepreneurs independent of the universities that are launching businesses, access to capital is gonna be a major challenge and um, AZ Bio is committed to working with our legislators, our philanthropic community and others to create novel solutions. So Arizona stops being the number five emerging market and takes its place in the top 10 markets in the country. That's the goal. So moving on, um, I want to switch over to the House of Representatives and talk about representative and um, current House Health Chair and soon to be Senate Health Chair, Representative Nancy Bartow. Um, Representative Bardo, you are in the un unique position of having served as chair on both sides of the chambers and will be Senate Health Chair in 2021. Important patient-focused bills related to prior authorization and step therapy and others including um, involving vulnerable individuals did not make it to the finish line in 2020. Based on your deep experience, what do you see happening in 2021? Well, thank you so much, Joan. Um, I um, am honored to, to uh, be here. I wish it were in person. I've always enjoyed the events that you've uh, you've all put put together for our benefit to further, uh, you know, expand our knowledge about the importance of the bioscience community and its importance to our state. Um, and growing the revenues that we need for uh, to accomplish so many other um, priorities in the state, like uh, funding education and public programs. Um, the, the nexus between the two um, is profound. And I really appreciate your leadership and, uh, and obviously for, for, for the recognition today. I, uh, I also want to thank you that you know you you're uh, you're focusing on for each of us some of the some of the accomplishments that that we've been able to to uh, do or are currently working on. Uh, sometimes um, our bipartisan work is really overlooked by the public, and uh, it's it's very important that we highlight what we what we're really doing on the ground, and it's encouraging to talk about it because. Sometimes we just don't get a chance to do that um, and allow people to really understand how well we can work together as, as colleagues across the aisle. You mentioned a couple of, uh, of bills that uh, fell by the wayside due to our early end of session this year, the prior auth and the step therapy bills that, that uh, we promoted and got halfway through the process almost unanimously. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the important thing to remember about um, those two bills and and many of the other ones that were uh, left on the cutting room floor is the uh, the fact that the patient's needs um, that uh, demanded those reforms are still there and they're waiting for those reforms to be passed. Now, the COVID environment just put a finer point on those needs in, in a lot of different ways. Um, but uh, for, for step therapy and prior auth, those reforms are critical to patients needing uh, timely uh, opportunities to have their, the right kind of meds at the right time. 
to have that access and no delay that the, the current systems uh, are unnecessarily complex and it, and expensive for physicians. I'm sure Dr. Shaw can elaborate on some of that. Um, I, I heard an estimate that each provider, it costs them $80,000 a year to, uh, to navigate uh, prior authorization processes in this state. And that's outrageous and it, it's, it's, uh, it costs lives. Um, so I expect those bills will be, you know, first on the agendas uh, coming out. But there are many others and that we've worked together um, really well that I think the public is expecting us to continue to work on. And that is um, the, the fact that we've really um, had an inhumane type of behavioral health system that ignores the most seriously mentally ill and ends up housing them in prison and, and we see them uh, re-hospitalized and, and homeless. You know, we shouldn't be criminalizing mental illness or, uh, or uh, substance use disorders. We need to do a much better job at diversion and reentry programs. And those pills too, a, a number of them um, got stuck in the process. Uh, we have data that shows that uh, the, the right kind of appropriate treatment and facilities at the right time can help, um, help us do the right thing for those, especially with chronic serious mental illness. And um, so I expect we will be working heartily on those issues. You know, uh, just for some context, uh, people with serious mental illness make up about four and a half percent of the nation's adult populations, but they, they make up about 20 to 26 percent of our jailhouse inmates. They're booked into jails about two million times a year, stay longer and are more apt to return. The average jail stay is less than a month, but inmates with SMI uh, may stay several months or even years in prison. And if they can't adjust to prison, uh, to the general population in prison, they're often at risk um, of being put in solitary confinement if, if they're at risk of hurting themselves or others. And, and oftentimes their SMI condition uh, worsens. So, and, and as you know though, eventually they're all released. And if they are unsuccessful at uh, re-entering society and the community, then again, the cycle repeats itself. And this is, this is a, a serious cost to public safety. And uh, not, not only to that, but to our budget. Um, so, you know, we need to start doing the right thing um, in, in having the, the appropriate oversight over these public, public programs. Um, the third thing I kind of wanted to mention real quickly, and I know this is probably going to come up uh, later in the conversation, but our workforce shortages, that too, you know, we've had a, a very, uh, we've had a lot of years to, of warning about the shortages in, um, in our workforce, trained uh, workforce uh, in mental health, in primary care, and uh, now critically so uh, for individuals with developmental disabilities. Uh, that was another huge priority last year budget-wise to, uh, to ensure that those group homes, those individuals um, that depend upon services in this in this state um, get the get the right kind of care that they need, and uh, you know with the uh, minimum wage increase that's put extra pressure with COVID. Not only have a lot of these individuals suffered from the disease itself, but because their programs, their day programs, training work pro programs have been curtailed, they've. Um, they've suffered and their families have suffered and they've regressed. So um, I will stop there and uh, I thank you again so much for the honor of being here and it's good to be back and working with my colleagues and, and thanks Kate for those, those great words of wisdom today too as well. Thank you Representative Barto, and, and you've been such a champion of, uh, you know, 
Bioscience Week starting off. You know, we had our fifth annual Bioscience Week this year, and it was um, then Senator Barto that that was the first one to do to proclaim that five years ago. Um, so thank you for that that another piece of that legacy. Um, we've been talking about health, and I'd like to introduce you to Representative Kelly Butler. Um, Kelly has been a member of the Health, Health Committee and a vocal advocate um, for access to high quality, affordable care, especially That's for right. our at-risk communities. Um, maternal health is not an area where Arizona has shined in recent years. Um, and newborn screening, um, we're, we're falling behind now in that area too. And Representative Butler has been a champion on both of those and many other things. Um, Kelly, it's your turn. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Joan. Thanks to everyone on this call. And uh, it's just an honor to be here and to talk about these really important issues. Obviously, as we go back into session, we're going to be thinking a lot about COVID-19. But today, uh, the focus on, on biosciences and what we should be doing to help people access care is really important. So uh, I, in terms of newborn screenings, um, it's extremely important to know that Arizona is the worst country when it comes, or the worst state in the whole country when it comes to the number of conditions, congenital conditions that we screen for uh, within our newborn screening panel. And so we're having bipartisan work done led by the March of Dimes to introduce a bill that would um, improve our ability to add screenings to the panel and to our ability to screen for those things in a more seamless manner with appropriate oversight. Um, but so important that as those advances and technology become available and we can improve lives through those screening processes that we are, we need to, to use that ability and, and allow those uh, advances to go forward more seamlessly. They're cost effective, uh, saves money to, to find those congenital conditions early and treat them. So super important. And um, the other thing that Joan uh, mentioned is, uh, and I want to add um, both our maternal uh, health, which is um, really in a crisis in Arizona still. We have study committees and we are looking at those issues. But one of the things that we know we could do is expand access to quality prenatal care. And in Arizona, we are uh, pretty low on the eligibility for women to qualify for our um, for our Medicaid program to receive that high quality care. Um, and we could we could expand that eligibility. Uh, and I'm hoping that we will be able to have bipartisan conversation about doing that um, because we know it will lead, obviously, leading better uh, maternal care leads to better outcomes. Um, and I will add kids care expansion to that as well. When we are thinking about expanding access to care, we should be thinking about leveraging these quality, affordable options for our families. It won't come as any surprise to anyone here, I, I bet, to know that Arizona um, is very low on, um, in terms of eligibility. We're the third worst in the country in eligibility for kids care. We are also one of the worst in the number of uninsured children in our state. So if we, we will sponsor that bill again uh, to hopefully expand the eligibility uh, for kids care so that families can afford insurance for their children. I, you know, and, and I know that uh, Senator Bowie and Senator Bruff McGee, uh, Senator Bartow, everyone on this call is concerned about mental health. I'm glad that that work is going forward. And it's important to know that children on our kids care program with our children's health insurance program receive behavioral health services. It's part of the comprehensive care. So if we want to take a look at really finding solutions to these problems, expanding access to care for women who are pregnant and for children in our state is so important. I hope we can have those um, really good conversations at the Capitol because I know it will improve Arizona, the health of Arizonans overall. Uh, it obviously will improve our economy to have healthier people able to go to work um, and, and improve people's quality of life. So I appreciate being here. I'm glad we're having these conversations and I'm hoping that we can continue them in earnest at the Capitol this, this session. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Representative Butler. And um, it, investments in our youngest, in protection of our unborn by protecting their mothers 
and um, and then providing our children with a good health foundation so that they can learn and they can grow and most importantly they can grow they can contribute to the future of Arizona so thank you thank you for those words um we have been talking about a lot of complex issues and um you know I know that the biosciences are not always the easiest thing to get your hands around um so that's why I was so excited when Representative Daniel Hernandez stepped up with Representative Jay Lawrence um, to create the Arizona Bioscience and Healthcare Caucus at the legislature. So, um, you know, Representative Hernandez is also a member of the Arizona Biosciences Roadmap Steering Committee with me. Um, but I would really like to get a look into your crystal ball, Daniel. And um, what do you see for next year? Uh, thank you, Joan. Thank you, everyone, for the honor of being able to serve as one of the co-chairs. Uh, last year, when Jay Lawrence and I launched it, um, we had a really ambitious agenda. I think we had six or seven meetings planned out. But because of COVID, we literally had one meeting and we had about 14 people show up, which was a good showing. But what we realized is a lot of my colleagues support the concept of bioscience, but are not too familiar with what that actually means, because so many of us come from different backgrounds and we have different um, specialties. And in the legislature, we are all focused on exactly what's in front of us and not usually able to even pay attention to things on the outside. We really wanted to make sure that we were bringing the biosciences to the legislature. So what I'm hoping is that we'll be able to recruit a Republican co-chair. Um, so if any of the Republicans on the line today would like to step up and join as the co-chair, let me know. Uh, but we want to make sure that what we do is we start providing um, hour-long sessions, lunch and learns, where we allow people to come in and present the kind of work that they're doing so that as we're having policy conversations, and trying to figure out how do we diversify Arizona's economy, we're doing it with actually receiving input from those who are directly impacted. So that's where I think Joan continues to be a fabulous resource of identifying potential speakers. When we started the first meeting, um, we got a list of things that members wanted to hear about. So we still have that list. We still have the list that we had proposed. So what I'm hoping we'll be able to do is identify a co-chair and then sometime in mid to late January, start holding regular meetings where we get to bring in presenters, probably over Zoom or Cisco WebEx for the first couple of months um, to present and talk about the issues that are impacting their companies and how they fit into the broader bioscience industry here in the state of Arizona. We know that in Arizona, because of the three great state universities we have, plus all of the startups, particularly with the angel investor tax credit that we hopefully will renew this year. We have a lot of opportunities to bring in some really innovative folks who are doing things that are world class research and bringing it to market. But we need to do more as the legislature to ensure that we're creating a regulatory environment that allows them to be able to do what they need to do to innovate, but also making sure that we're providing that access to funds through things like the Angel Investor Tax Credit, through the TRIP in Prop 301, to make sure that as we are deciding these really important issues as legislators, we have a bigger and better understanding of why it's important that we do those things. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get that started um, and start having regular conversations with people in the industry about what this means and how the work that we do at the Capitol will impact them. And then hopefully once we have a vaccine, start having folks being able to visit and actually go in person to see the kind of work that's happening, particularly since we have so many of these folks in the Valley where we can take a road trip from the capital to uh, some of the different labs and some of the different businesses in the Valley that are working in the bioscience field. Thank you so much, Representative Hernandez. And um, a shout out also to your sister, Representative Alma Hernandez, um, for her service on the um, Health and Human Services Committee in the House of Representatives. She's always a great addition, as I'm sure Representative Bartow will agree. Um, she's nodding. So um, with that, and I'm not sure that I can see him, so I want to make sure that he's here. Representative Shah, are you with us? 
it was about a 50-50 chance um, because, as I said earlier, Representative Shaw is working in the emergency room. And um, the work that's being done right now um, as our cases continue to climb, um, his work is a little bit more important right now than, than taking a bow. But um, we will, I want to really, um, again, thank Representative Shaw for his leadership um, on the bills that he brought forward relative to things like prior authorization, um, as well as um, step therapy, the work that he did on helping the legislators understand step therapy, as well as you know many, many healthcare issues. And um, we truly are, are, are deeply appreciative to him. <clears throat> so we had planned to give everybody a rapid fire, you know, one minute close, but we are coming up on the end of the hour. And I do want to be respectful for everybody's time. So I'm going to, I'm going to take your minutes away from you, members of the legislature, and use the last few seconds that we have to um, extend on behalf of Arizona's bioscience and healthcare community our deepest appreciation for the decades of work that have happened at the Arizona legislature that have enabled us to do everything that we are doing today. And we look forward to working with you on public health, on innovation, on education, and on the things that will drive Arizona's future for many years to come. Thank you to our trailblazers. Congratulations, Senator Carter, our champion. Have a very, very safe, happy, and healthy holiday season. For those of you um, celebrating the Festival of Lights, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. Um, to many of you that will have the, be celebrating going forward, and please wear your mask. Follow the public health guidance. If you're not feeling well, stay home. Call your doctor. Get a test. The solution is not with our healthcare workers. It's not with our vaccine manufacturers. It is not with our drug manufacturers. And it's not even with our doctors. It's with us. We can all be part of the solution. And thank you for doing your part. Happy holidays, everyone, and again, we're looking forward to a better, brighter, and healthier 2021. Bye-bye.